fancy colored pencil. Uh, nine by twelve. Wait, why am I doing that? I'll just do this, keep that over there, and I'll just change cameras. You should be able to go over to YouTube now. Yep. All right. Now. Nick, multimedia. Yep. And you're painting the. The Fennec. Painting the um, camera. Yep. Which means I, I just have... muted. Um... Yeah, I gotta remember to mute that too. <laughs> mm. So if I'm doing this camera, I have to make sure I bring the chat over to this one. Okay, cool. All right. So now, yep, cool. So now I have everything in there. So now that little box in the lower right hand corner, you're going to like this. Uh, the lower box that's in the lower camera on camera one uh, will now channel the Discord chat, the Twitch chat, the Facebook chat, and the YouTube chat all to that one little box. If I did that right. Oh, bugger. Did you turn your audio down? Hang on a second. Because you were really loud and now you're really quiet. Discord chat, audio Discord. Oh, freak. Try that again. That again. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, I know what I did. I'm an idiot. I turned the audio down on the... <laughs> I turned the audio down on the TV... Forgetting I need to have those speakers on. Hey, listen, people, I don't always have genius moments. This is not one of my bright genius moments. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't hear Matt. Why can't I hear Matt? I turned the freaking audio down. And I'm kind of wondering if that's what the problem was on Monday night. If I just had that think moment. Because I didn't want to listen to... I didn't want to listen to the lo-fi music that I had playing in the in the background. Um, so no, so um, let's see. I'm gonna change this because I want to be able to look at you while you're looking at me. There we go. Whee! Um, It'll be like we're having a conversation. It it will be. See, on my camera, it looks like we're having a conversation. Uh, so I went over to. Um, Michael's to get uh, just kind of kick it for a little bit, see what they had on sale. And they had their spring stuff up because, well, I'm pointed in the background. Um, the winter boughs and the winter decorations are still up. Uh, and it's kind of, I, I really need to get off my lazy duckus and get that done. And so I wanted some more boughs to put up in the tree so that it was fuller. And uh, I was hoping I'd find them at the Michaels in Germantown while I was kicking it, waiting for Rose to get down for dinner. And <laughs> remember how I bought like four of those um, majestic palm trees and every single one of them has died because I suck at yeah. plants. It, it, <laughs> 
there was I, you had the black I, I had the black thumb of death. I'm the guy. I, I'm literally that meme in Home Depot with the woman going, "Do you want to come home and die?" <laughs> Come home with me and die. Right, because that's everything you'll, green. I'll, I've, I've, water and you'll, die. I'll, I'll, I'll you'll take a look at my cats and go, nope, I'm out of here. <laughs> Reincur me, reincarnate me as a tree somewhere in the Amazon. I'd have a longer life. Um, <laughs> Taoism and Buddhism. Yay, reincarnation. Um, so I found... They have the spring trees, and all their spring stuff is on sale, because, yeah, it's spring. And so I found a fake Majesty Palm, because we all know I kill things. And it was, yeah. like, 50% off, so this $130 plant that I would never spend $130 for a piece of plastic um, was on sale for 60 bucks, and I was like, well... I can pretend I don't have a black thumb that would kill everything. So I bought it. Well, I bought it after dinner. But while I was still waiting for Rose to get <clears throat> to Cracker Barrel, uh, <laughs> I went over by the art supplies to see if they had anything over there on sale because I just bought... See, I'm, I'm one of those special little nuggets. We all know this. Um, where'd it go? And, uh, I'm so special. Um, I was at Hobby Lobby just kind of kicking it, and I was working on the hummingbird piece and working on the background and knew I needed a filbert to blend the background with better. And mm. was just compulsively just like, I agree with so many other artists where it's like, there's doing art and then there's shopping for art supplies and shopping for art supplies should be a hobby all in of its own because it's a thing. It's really hard <laughs> for people to go into craft stores That's and art supply stores. Just like, and I'm like over there, I'm like, I could get some filbert brushes and, and, <laughs> so there was a pack of three and there, the other one's over there, but there's this pack of three and they have, because they were in the pack and not individual, I couldn't check and see how firm these bristles were. Yeah. And I'm not the kind of person to open up a packet of brushes in the store and then go, you know, just, here. I don't know if that's pick, getting picked. Oh, yeah, it is. It's getting picked up by the mic. See how firm the brushes, the bristles are on the brush. So I just bought them. And then I got home that night, and I'm like, well, they're labeled scrubber brushes, not brights or filberts or... There's 4,000 freaking names that people nickname um, these round-edged... Uh, usually they're called filberts, but I've heard them been called brights, too, um, which is technically the wrong term, but brushes, it's boring. Um... Got it home, opened up the thing, and I'm like, oh, man, these are really stiff. These aren't going to... And then kind of laughed at me, because this is like the Shaboom shoes. And for those that are re-watching the broadcast, that is a cat in the background. Excuse me. Get out! Is that Brooklyn? No, that would be Duchess wanting to know if maybe I'm, you know, on a dating site looking to hook her up with a new cat boyfriend because cat boyfriends are a thing. She's just, she's in heat and she's going, um, she's in heat and she's, um, going in next month to get spayed. In fact, she's going in in okay. three weeks to get spayed. But for the meantime, she is in heat so she's been running around singing the song of her people and now she thinks because i'm in here talking that maybe perhaps you're in the building and that maybe you might want to scratch her butt or touch her in some inappropriate way that would you know maybe involve a child pornography ring or pet pornography i don't really know she's just she's so so annoying right now I was talking to the vet, and she's like, oh, she's singing the song of her people. And I'm like, oh, yes. Yes, we are very much singing the song of our people. Um, 
So I got these brushes home and I took them out and they're not just chiseled on the shape of the uh, tip of the brushes and just shaped round to shade with, but it's also chiseled um, that way. It's kind of getting picked up by the camera, um, but it's, it's wedge shaped. And I thought, well, this is a cool brush. And then I did that whole thing where I'm like, I didn't think about what it was called when I bought the brush because the brushes were called scrubber brushes. And because they're such stiff, freaking bristled, that's pretty much all they're good for. It's just scrubbing crap into the freaking canvas. And I was like, yeah, they're exactly what they're labeled as. That is not what I wanted mm -hmm. to buy. But I bought it anyway. I'll, I'm sure I will use it. I, I really, I'm sure I will use it. But it wasn't what I meant to buy. So I'm back in, in Michael's uh, two days ago. I'm like, well, maybe I can find another filbert. Not that I really need any more brushes. Because I have all of those brushes. But... Well, it's, listen, it's an addiction. I'm sorry. I, I inherited probably a hundred paintbrushes from my mom and still went out and bought more paintbrushes. And I still have a lot of brushes from my mom. Like the sad thing is, is that I could put the camera over there, point to all of those and go, I have all of those brushes and then go over and up and there's more brushes. Nope. Go the right direction. Nope. That way. There's another cup of brushes that's got like 20 some odd brushes in there. So there's probably 150 different brushes, but no, I have to go my buy more brushes. Love brushes. Right. It's, 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 a, it's a compulsion. And as you do, as you do. Yeah. Right. It's like, I don't, you can never have enough brushes. And when they're like three to $10 a piece, it's really hard. It's like potato chips. You just can't say no. Uh, so I was over there, it's over there looking for stuff I don't need. And there was a sign on the building saying everything was 70% off or they're having a 70% off sale. And all of a sudden I'm looking up and there's like the paint in one aisle and brushes across from that and there's drawing stuff. And I knew I wanted to get a secondary piece going with uh, out the hummingbirds because I was having so many problems with the hummingbirds because I've now put the hummingbirds kind of on a back burner because it's not the color scheme that I normally work in so that's a challenge just mixing the right colors the flowers are iridescent blue purple and red so that's another challenge and I'm also making a yellow flower a really deep purple red blue color so the hues don't even they're not, they don't work together. So, and it's not even an easy flower. It's not like I'm painting a daisy. Because um, bearded iris is just hugely complicated. So I'm like, I'm going to put that on a back burner. And maybe I'll just do something simple. And I'll do a couple of... Uh, uh, bearded iris studies. Before I get back into it. Because I made myself super frustrated the other night. And I think Rose might have it on the head when she's like, yeah, but you're listening to your mom's music and you're trying to channel your mom because she made all of those florals and then you made yourself upset. So you were as much in your own head and being your own enemy as you were actually trying to get something done. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, you know, let's see if they have some ink tents on sale because uh, as we know... The ink tents, uh, viewer-wise, are way more popular. And while I have a whole roll of watercolor pencils, um, and I even have watercolor paint in tubes, I just wanted to play with the ink tents because once I lay the color in, it's kind of like the paint where, well, now you're kind of committing to it. Get over it. Um, and it's probably as much working with the media as is it as it is anything else so <clears throat> um i just wanted to get off of the um habit of uh 
having the computer be my safe zone. So uh, while I was there, up in the upper hand, uh, top of it, there was like color pencils, markers, uh, pens, gel pens, all this other jazz, it's more drawing and stuff. And I thought, well, I wonder if they've got ink tent pencils, you know, because they their aisle has now exploded with different brands and medias and watercolor, like Faber-Castell has watercolor pencils, they have uh, color pencils, you know, they and they have pastels too, so they have watercolor pastels and um, regular color pencils. And so I was like, well, maybe they've got ink tents now because ink tents are really building in popularity. And so I thought, well, yeah, they're getting more popular. Of the ones that are on the YouTube channel, uh, the ink tents ones seem to take off really, really well. And I thought maybe finally Michaels was going to carry them and then I'd have to drive to Chicago to go to Black Artworks. And they had a lot of them that were all the Derwent ones, and Derwent's the one that makes the Ink Tents pencils. So they have, well, this is 50% off, this is, all these, they're 50% off. So I'm like an idiot and shopping by brand, not paying attention to the fact that Derwent, like a lot of other places, make watercolor pencils, they make color pencils, they make Ink Tents pencils, plus they make regular drawing pencils. So my brain went, this pack of ink tents is sold out. This pack of ink tents is sold out. Ooh, wait. This is a pack of 36. It's normally $90. And it's on sale for 35 And my brain didn't look at the word watercolor. So I was like, ooh, and it's a pamphlet. And I'm like doing the math. And I'm like, well, that's like about a buck a pencil. And usually ink tents are about two two fifty a pencil, which is what I pay for my Prisma colors. And so I was like, I'll, I'll get this, you know, and that's a good buy. There's only two left. So me and this clerk walk all the way up to the front where the cages where the expensive art material, the expensive art material, materials, the, yeah, I have more coffee. <laughs> more, coffee. more coffee. Uh-huh. Take a drink. <laughs> Take a drink and try again. Um... So we went up to the front cage where the boxes of expensive pencils are. And by expensive, I mean like you're talking the 72 pack or the 132 packs of Derwent or Faber-Castell or Prismacolors because that's all $60 or more when you buy the initial pack. So we thought that that was where they were and then we couldn't find them in there. And she's like, well, since they're 50% off because we're doing a spring clearance, Maybe they're on the clearance rack. And I was like, mm, I don't think so because they're very pocketable and that's why they're in the cage. But we go all the way back to another part of the back part of the store to the clearance aisle and that's not where they're at. So then she gets another text from another cover. Oh, they're, they're, in, they're in a cart in, in a storage room. So we walk to the front of the store again and we find the cart and there's all these packets of colored pencils in there. And she hands the one to me and she's like, here you go. And I looked at it, I'm like, well, this can't be right because it says watercolor. And then I, like, looked at the thing. She goes, yeah, but this is watercolor. And I was like, oh, I am so dumb. We chased all over the store for what I thought was ink tense pencils, and they were watercolor. Because I read everything except for the word watercolor. So last night, I did something that could be very bad. I went on Flick Art Materials because I've only got three, ten, nine. I think I've only got like 15 ink tents pencils. And there's 72 colors for ink tents. Um, the vast majority of what I do have are in the brown tone. Uh, browns, yellows, uh, there's one that's India ink black. And then I think I have like a cherry red, two greens and an orange like I don't have oh they're all very natural colors for doing horses and doing landscapes not really landscapes just animals because animals are brown yeah and so I thought well I'm doing this fennec and I wanted to do it in color pencil and um I wanted to do it in color pencil and ink tents kind of a do a multimedia thing and I may or may not Get off it the appears that they're blonde too. 
they they do look very tawny. They're very pretty little creatures. Although they are very skittish. They're very skittish. Um, so I went on Blick Art Materials and then in the middle of the night decided to splurge and buy the dang ink tents that I wanted to buy in Michael's the other night. So somewhere around the end of the month I should be getting a shipment that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more ink tents pencils. And then some plastic trays because I realize that right now because of the <clears throat> do, do, do because of this painting I have both of my usual pen well palettes full one of which is filled with greens and foliage co uh, foliage cover colors so greens and yellows and browns and then I have the other one, which is filled with blues and purples and whites and yellows for the irises. Because uh, <laughs> I'm dumb, but I don't have... I have a total of three Tenwell palettes. And two of them have paint that are for a painting that's currently in progress. And then the third one is all full of glitter. Is that an alarm? No, that's uh, my father calling me. Your dad has been sending me TikToks, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to tell you about that. Me neither. I don't know. Like I, I, everybody's been TikToking so much, and Rose got me following some woman that. I really. I really don't dig TikTok either. It's it's hard. It's hard for me to get into TikTok because, um. Like, for just something really quick and catchy, I guess, for just a joke, for a 15-second joke, that's one thing. But yeah. I was watching Jazza do, like, an art challenge on TikTok. And after watching him, this video for, like, I think it was a 20-minute video of him trying to make this art challenge, I really, it... It's not the anxiousness that was the problem. Like, if I was getting anxiety, it was just like, oh my god, this is just infuriating. Like, it, it was, it really made me want to just go stop doing that. <laughs> I didn't actually get anxious about it, but it was just like, this is not the right platform for that. Like, it doesn't work. A 15-second TikTok challenge should not... That's not enough time. Like, I can't possibly get down a piece down in, like, 15 seconds. Here's here's my 15-second TikTok challenge. Is your paint bad? How do you tell? If it looks like this, it's bad. End of video. <laughs> like, that's all I can do in, like, 15 seconds is, like, do you get, like, color pencils or pastel pencils and they're all smashed on the inside and they break every time you shoot? You. I think society is getting more and more ADD. I I think that honestly that is contributing to it a lot. I am yeah. seriously trying to figure out how I'm going to do this so that I can keep an eye on the chat and keep an eye. Well, I suppose I can do that. Maybe I can do that. I, I can't know. see any of the other chat boxes except for what's on YouTube. Well, that's the whole idea is to kind of make it so that you don't have to keep what it should do if it's working correctly, Matt, is that yeah. um, the idea is that effectively instead of you having to flip through tabs back and forth, um, think, of, think of Restream like a router. Okay, so instead of you having to flip back and forth between uh, Discord and YouTube or whatever, which is what you were doing, okay? Yeah. The, the Discord chat becomes a platform where people can talk if they want to, if they want to type. But mostly, I think that Discord would be an audio channel so that you can talk and then Devin can talk and whoever else wants to verbally discuss stuff with me and just get into a chit-chat mode with me. So that is what will keep the discord chat for and i just realized i used it to i covered something up 
Well, let's do this. We'll put it over there. Okay. Not the greatest, but it'll work. Or we can put it here. Let's put it here. There. All right. So the Discord server, which is what you and I are using to talk with verbally, yeah. is going to be an audio channel. People could type in there if they want to, but you don't have to keep an eye on it. Okay. When Rose gets on, when Rosandra gets on, she primarily inboxes through YouTube. So what's going on right now with this restream, and we can give a shout out to Seth. Not that Seth is going to watch this because Seth has got his own thing going on. But Seth was taking a business course in high school pertaining to streaming and the ability to do streaming. And he has, we'll get to talking about streaming, about he was streaming, I, it wasn't Minecraft, it was something else. And he's on Twitch, so on the weekends when he works, I sit there and I'll BS back and forth with streaming about him. So he streams straight from his Xbox. So his is like A, B, stream, don't care. I've got yeah. this tangle of wires, and we were all kind of laughing about it last night at work, about how my wiring in my computer has wires, and it makes a rat's nest look really organized. And I was like, you know, all things considered, the the menagerie of cords that's in the cabinet down below me is actually really organized. Um, but even with all of that, we were only doing one platform at a time because... You know, I'd have to come up with multiple schedules, and we were having trouble enough uh, just getting on a regular schedule with Monday nights, of which um, this is probably the only time I'm going to have a chance to do that, make it up a normal conversation. Monday night, I will most likely be working and not streaming because Wednesday is my surgery, my oral surgery. Uh, so I will be not streaming on... Boy, Wednesday is a big day. Yeah, Wednesday is the big day, and it's a big day for I you, too. In, I, I go in on Wednesday to see if I have to have surgery again or not. Yay, the efforts of getting old. <laughs> right? Yes. So the restream kind of acts as a, like a router or a hub. So what it's doing is right now for the stream, we are live on Facebook, we are live on YouTube, and we are live on Twitch. So um, we're doing all three platforms at once. And then what it does is because people can type in and have the option of commenting and chatting on all of those platforms, what Restream does is it pulls all of those platforms, including the Discord chat, into this one chat box on the screen. Okay. Which for you, makes it hugely, hugely easier. It should if I can read the checkbox. I can't. You can't read the checkbox. Is it too small? Yeah. Okay. So let me see if I can resize this. I'm a little afraid of making it too big. So now it's like a good one-fifth of the screen. So that carries all three venues? Yes. Actually, all four, because it, it carries the Discord chat, too. So you've okay. got Discord, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, all on that one, all on that one carrier. Huh. And also, if I decide to stream when you are not on, because occasionally I'll stream after I get home from work and I'm like too wound up and I can't, um, I can't focus and I can't settle down, or I'm like, I really, really want to work on my art and just stream for the sake of just getting it done. Um, sure. This one also has notifications on it, and it has a text to voice reader, so that if people are um, typing and I'm just lost in my head and in my own artwork and I'm not looking at the screen anymore, I will get notifications and it will read off what people are ch texting me as part of the audio for 
um, the stream. Okay. So that's kind of nice. <clears throat> so like I said, it, it should make your job hugely easier because it's, it's right there. So yeah, so I have um, some ink tense pencils coming. I should be here by the end of the month. And then I ordered at least three of them for this Fennec. Um, Cause I tried, I, I didn't, when I originally bought the ink tense pencils, I bought them just to try them out. And the plus to the ink tense is that unlike the watercolors, once I lay the ink tense down, they're down for life and they, originally I was kind of hesitant to continue with the media, um, but now they've been on the market for quite a while, like two years now, and they're finding out that the initial concerns about the light fastness and fading if you kept it in sunlight is not as bad as originally they thought, and I think they've kind of perfected what they do. Because um, effectively what it is is that, you know, if. Well, you're familiar with a quill kind of system with a quill well and, or a quill and an inkwell kind of system. And you dip your quill in the inkwell and that's how you do calligraphy, which is how most people think of ink yeah. unless they're thinking of a ballpoint pen. Yeah. Uh, and now, in the last couple of years, they've really gone forward with some advances in how to work with the media of ink, because now you have ink and alcohol-based markers, which are really good for blending, and those are really, really popular now with like the Copic markers and all of that. Um, and then they've also got these Inktense pencils, which is basically, uh, if you think of like the old Chinese, um, like they used to have a wedge of ink, and then you would wet the brush, and that, that's how they did brush, Chinese brush painting is that they had a block of ink uh, and a block of pigment. Mm -hmm. So the ink tense pencils are basically based on the same kind of um, method and science, except that now you have, with ink tense, you have uh, two ways of buying the ink tense. You can buy them in blocks or you can buy them in pencils. I have bought them in pencils because what you can do is treat them like watercolor and lay them down as you would a watercolor pencil or a, co um, a regular colored pencil and then wash them with water and pull the ink out in order to wash the water and pull it out into a gradient or to saturate sure. the paper with uh, the pigment that's on it so it saturates into the surface and so and gets into the tooth of the paper so you have a, a more even color and a better saturation then you can layer on top of that um which you know we did in the video for um that was the rhinoceros hornbill um okay. which, uh so the, we did that just to see how much you could layer and how intense you could get those layers could you get them to a real true black uh, so I'm, after doing that one, I hadn't really worked with the ink tents so much because uh, I just really didn't. Um, but I kind of want to play with it with this, this fennec a little bit because I want to kind of work on the layering thing because these fennecs being tawny, um, I think that being able to layer from the really, really light gray, blue, purples, and the tawny colors into the deeper colors would probably look really, really nice. And the ink tense is probably going to be my best on that one versus doing watercolor where if I do a layer of watercolor, go to work or whatever, and then come back and then want to work on it again. If I want to build a layer on that and make like the back, as you saw, and the tail is a darker, uh, more reddish, ruddy chestnut color. And um, if I do that in watercolor and then try and build up on that in sections, then the problem becomes that I can't really um, build on it because watercolor will wash out once, even if it's dry on the paper, it, you can lift it out. It's one of the properties of watercolor is all watercolor pigment is it, you can lift it out of the paper. Ink tense, once it's in there, it's like, Nope, I'm here to stay. I hope you like me. You know. So. Yeah. 
So that's why I chose ink tents over watercolor on this because I want to build up the layers. And then I kind of want to play with the whole idea um, because ever since we did the whole thing with um, the first frost, uh, was the full, the, the Halloween piece that uh, I was working on, I uh, really kind of like the whole idea that I can do something and make it effectively so that you would have to buy the original. You can't um, download the image. It's not going to look the same or it's not going to look right. Um, so as, as much as I don't necessarily like glitter, because as we all know, I'm more of a rough and tumble, go out to the ranch kind of girl than I am. I need to get my nails done and make my hair pretty and just glitter. Uh, I like the fact that I can add something like glitter as almost like a watermark on my work True. and incorporate it as a watermark on my work so that people on the internet can't either they would have to rework major sections of it or it's just going to get that idea from from Disney where did you get the idea um i see the thing was is that i kind of wanted to when we got was that that was after we went to disney wasn't it that was after you and i went to universal um i wanted to do after I got done going up to Woodside Ranch up in Austin, I wanted to do something that was a horse painting that was kind of Halloween themed, but was, it, it was the challenge of stay out of the dirty, dark colors that are realistic colors. So almost make it cartoony while making it realistic, which is kind of a, one of those aspects of manga art. Um, Okay, that sounded like I said mega like mega hats. No, we're not talking about Trump. Manga. Yeah. Um, so, kind of one of the things about like Japanese uh, anime art is that it, it's meant to okay. look real realistic while having a cartoony kind of color palette. And they have a tendency of actually getting more realistic and kind of dirty in their colors now. So it becomes even a little bit more gritty. Okay. So I wanted it to have that realistic feel, but have the like cartoony lightness and not necessarily the realistic colors, which is why we had to, when I did the painting, I had to ditch all of the darker umbers and had to stick with the siennas and the cadmium colors. Um, but then it was the whole thing of was, as long as I'm that far into the Disney-esque part of it, and we were kind of doing the whole, it's kind of got a Disney feel, but it's basically just kind of Disney feeling because it's got that Disney color palette. If I could take it a step further and, um, incorporate some of the, how Disney does their movement with, um, and they do it in all of their movies, um. Whenever there's, like, even in the new one, which is the dragon movie that is out, uh, Rhea and the Dragon or something like that, whatever that new one is, it doesn't actually release on regular Disney until June. Um, okay. When the dragon is conjured in that movie, they do it with, like, water droplets, and they did that with Frozen 2 when um, I think I only saw Frozen 2 once. So I think it's when Elsa conjures something and it has something to do with some shipwreck. Um, they do the movement with water droplets rather than doing it with the typical swirls and twinkling noises and the, the whole ring kind of thing. Um, but they do it, as I said in the video, they do it with a lot of things. They do it in almost every Disney movie whenever something magical or mystical happens. That's how Disney translates magical and mystical you can't see so that the viewer can still see that, oh, well, this is starting to go on now. And that's their visual way, their audio way of saying, this is something supernatural that's going on and it's a good thing. It's not scary. Uh, so I wanted to kind of be able to say, well, how would you paint wind? If you paint wind in a painting like a landscape, you would 
say that you knew you were painting wind by like trees bending and the, the you know the, the leaves of a, like a palm tree because I'm thinking of Disney so I'm think, thinking of Florida you would instead of the palm trees bending down like this the palm trees would be like this and they would all be going in one direction and the tree would be bending well over um, because it would all get pushed over by the wind but if it's something that's just a small um, a breeze that wouldn't necessarily make a whole lot of actual physical movement. I was trying to figure out how to translate that. So I was like, oh, well, you know, well, you know, how do you translate some, something like breath? It would just be like steam coming out of a nose. But if, if that kind of translates into an exhale and it would act, you know, translate into warm steam and moisture versus cold, dry air, which is, the physics of it um but if it was something more than that like with the with the first with the first frost full it was like i wanted it to be more than that i wanted to be able to express that the um the full had this like inherent gift in the first year of its life to actually bring about the first frost and so when it bends down and instead of sniffing stuff to smell it which is what usually horses are doing if it were to like blow on things um then it would create a frost breath kind of like elsa and then to make it more magical it would have to be something that came from that bowl which is why we did the you know i did scroll work that goes up the legs and goes around the body and i thought well in like animation you can make twinkles and you can make audio effects to make so the visuals match the audio and then the viewer can go oh this is a magical talent that this has this isn't something normal um so that's where that came from but i think what i'm going to do with like this fennec is i am kind of like i really like the whole fact that if you use if you can tastefully use glitter on an original then effectively what you do is you preserve the original as its own thing and then you can't really make copies of it and um so what i can do like with the fennec hang on a second i'm gonna switch cameras um well i apologize because i'm having issues with this camera because once again it didn't save the settings okay apply yeah you got banding up on that screen now yeah it's gone now yeah, for some reason important. for some reason it's not saving my settings when i close obs Okay. And so I, I had to do this yesterday too. I had to, um, I had to adjust all the settings on the, um, I had to adjust the settings on this camera. I don't know why I have to keep doing this. It's kind of dumb. OBS is not actually saving the settings. Um, so what I was kind of thinking of doing so that, whoops, don't forget to take the camera with you. Derp. Okay. So what I was thinking about doing is, um, taking and laying in this fennec in color pencil and ink tents and basically i just really wanted the watercolor for like this part of the face where it's real detailed and in the eyes and True. then use the ink tents for the regular rest of the body where the fur and the texture is in the fur and then Primarily, the palette would be very earthy colors, lots of browns and oranges and yellows and creams. Um, but then I thought, well, Fennec's come from the desert, and it gets into applying what happened in fall with 
the first frost. So with the first frost fold, we use the glitter in the painting to um, transpose the effect of magic in a <clears throat> painting, in a still painting, and give it motion. Um, but the more I've been kind of picking at this in the back of my head, I thought, well, there's so many other applications that exist in real life when you're talking about um, things that catch your eye movement wise that are very fast and fleeting and it's particularly particles in the air in a natural atmosphere so it would be like sure. water that's being reflected in the sun like as, as of a splash from water it's um, pollens and stuff that goes through the air that becomes like a bokeh effect when you're talking about walking through the woods. I mean, everybody's taken that moment where they've walked through the woods and there's like maybe the sun is lower in the sky or whatever, it's partially obscured and then you get a beam of light uh, that is not necessarily where you are, but it would be this attractive beam of light and because of an uncontrolled atmosphere, you have particulates of maybe dust, debris, pollen, um, hair fibers, whatever, um, that are floating through the breeze, and then that gets picked up as little particulates in a sunbeam that's completely separate from the viewer and creates movement in a piece. And we've all seen that in the woods and whatever. And I thought, well, that can't be the only thing. And I thought, well, if you do something with, um, like the desert, you have that as well because every once in a while the wind will blow and it'll pick up sand particles so that you basically can have that in any environment that is there and therefore you could um you could really put glitter on any piece you wanted to in order to translate it into atmospheric movement if it's done okay. tastefully um specifically it's like easiest i it's like the whole easy hard thing because uh, I was thinking about this in January February about how uh, we could do um, that piece that's back behind me in the corner back there that big 24 by 48 canvas yeah. um, and we could do the Alps painting which is the Alps in the background and the Matterhorn in the background and a pack of wolves chasing a red deer. Um, and the layout in my head is actually a shot that well, we, you and I had discussed this in another stream about how the shots in that particular PBS special were almost so phenomenally fantastic that it looked CGI. Like it was too perfect. The whole thing where that golden eagle was landing on a spot time after time and I'm sure it's a okay. reused it's a reused shot. They just recycled it, but there is no indication on that bird that it's a falconer's bird. But there's also no reason for that bird to land in that specific spot to get that perfect shot of its talons coming down on that rock and grabbing the rock and landing, um, yeah. and turning around to look back over the Matterhorn in the same direction that um, the camera's facing. So basically, to support the narrative that you're experiencing the Alps from an eagle's eye point of view was such a fantastic shot that I was like this has got to be faked and the photography was phenomenal like I could I, I'm not even going to try to try and do anything like that but I can paint that um so to do like the foreground is a skyline ridge with a bunch of wolves chasing down a red elk or a red deer and then having maybe the red, you know, the deer jumping off the cliff to do that whole movie trope thing where the good guy gets away by jumping over a ravine. <laughs> Which sounds fantastic, but at the same time, we, you know, I've seen it happen. And uh, in that particular aspect, um, you could easily, easily use glitter for your watermark to translate as the snow glistening in the sunlight and use it as a lighting effect. Okay. So, um, 
this glitter thing has been on my mind for months and so the sad thing is is that in my sorry your audio cut out or did it no i don't think it did okay um, in my menagerie of things that I have for paint, I have the white, uh, I don't think this actually has a color, so this is that glitterific white paint, which has got a lot of opalescence in it. Um, this is kind of like an emerald color, uh, which I think would translate well in maybe a tropical environment where it would reflect lots of blues and greens and yellows. <coughs> and then I have that uh, dragonfly glaze and I've got it in a variety of color tones um, I could I think the one that's going to work is going to be this one that kind of goes from blue purple to yellow orange um, but I don't have a straight up orange and I don't have a straight up yellow Now, do they have this stuff in the same amount of colors as your as your paints? They do, but they don't. Um, the thing I'm, I'm really getting surprised about, and the thing that is changing my mind about this glitter paint thing is that you can get it in such a large variety of sizes. And I have never kind of considered using glitter in the same way that you would effectively think of as a bokeh effect, which is that um, the best way I can translate it that you would understand is kind of like ghost orbs. When people are photographing in sure. a dark room and we look at it and we go, it's dust. And then somebody goes, no, it's a specter. It's a spirit from beyond. And right. as a photographer, you're going, there's dust in the room. It got caught up by the light and it basically created an orb um and they do that now a lot with it's actually called bokeh um but effectively it's taking a high contrast background and pulling it so out of focus that your lights and darks just become gradient shapes okay. sometimes they're hearts sometimes they're circles sometimes they're <coughs> different shapes or sometimes they're just abstract blobs but um, for the most part, they're shapes, but you could effectively use that same lighting and photography technique and apply it with painting by using different gradient sizes of glitter that are all roughly the same grade and tone. Because you can actually get really big glitter that's almost um, sequin size. So you're right. talking like, you know, five, six millimeter, which when you're talking millimeters, my brain kind of goes, that's not big. Um, but it, it really kind of is when it's two, three millimeters versus like itty bitty microscopic, um, like this dragonfly glaze is super, super fine. Um, when you go from super, super fine like this uh, dragonfly glaze all the way to something larger that's craft glitter, which when you and I were you know growing up glitter was square and it was metallic and it was all the same shot uh size and it was what six colors um yeah. so <clears throat> there wasn't much availability to it there wasn't much um interest in it and the really bad part of it is it got everywhere um oh yeah so that made That's it working. Yeah, it, it it definitely became craft herpes. And so now the nice thing about doing and painting and working with glitter as a media and applying it toward traditional art is you can use it not only as a watercolor relief um, that would make your original more valuable and make it really hard for somebody online without completely redoing your entire piece <clears throat> to uh, copy because it's a part of the design and that's one of the things that really once I got done and I got over this hump with am I doing the right thing and I got a feeling I'm going to do that with this painting too with these 
flowers because that is not my it's it's not my normal palette it's not my normal subject which is why i'm struggling with it so much <clears throat> but um to be able to apply that in a lighting effect and then effectively making it near impossible for somebody who would be seeing a digital version of it to copy it and create the same effect because you'd have to take and block out entire chunks of the painting it is very appealing the other thing that's nice and appealing is it doesn't get everywhere I mean I have glitter in my office don't get me wrong there's glitter in the studio but that is from when I was working on the winter post Christmas not holiday Christmas band that had um, the opalescent yeah. glitter on it in order to make the band pop and make it look more dressy um, but when you go and you can buy these glitters at Walmart these glitter paints and they're not that expensive if you buy them at Walmart um, and Walmart also has the different grades they don't have <clears throat> as much as far as a variety um, okay. but for like this dragonfly glaze at Hobby Lobby it's $4.99 and I think it's like four bucks so it's maybe like a dollar cheaper at Walmart um, and they won't have as much variety at Walmart as they do at like Hobby Lobby or Michaels and I don't know that you can buy it on Blick Art Materials because um, uh, I hadn't looked when I went on last night I was more focused on buying some Inktense pencils than I was looking for more of this kind of paint because I can buy it in town and and just so you know I don't because I've got the stats up on another screen uh, we do have viewers on Twitch today so hello to anybody who's like on Twitch and watching or whoever's like on Facebook and watching because I think you might be listed as a viewer on YouTube or it might be a bot but somebody on Twitch is watching <coughs> um, but now not only do you have it's not the same six colors it's not gold silver red green blue yellow um, you have a variety of colors like I think I want to say with this um, with this glitterific paint uh, I want to say there's 10 or 12 well, it, it, I want to say there's like 10 or 12 colors to this glitterific paint and that's got a larger grain of glitter to it than say uh, and this gets back into a craft glitter this is folk art um, paint and this is the one that I originally bought for doing Christmas ornaments and this is okay that's the thing that's got got me kind of tripped out is the fact that um see if I can do this you might do better showing that in the uh in the, in the camera in that's the over the art cam all right so like this I'm wait for the lag yeah I like that okay so between these three uh, kinds of paint, not only are they different grades of color and different um, sections of hue, but they're also three different grades of size in glitter. So you've got the, and they're all done by Folk Art, which is not sponsored, but it's just the stuff that I found, just in case anybody wants to go back on this. So you have the Glitterific, which has got a larger glitter and by the way there is another version of glitterific that actually has even larger pieces of glitter but they're shapes um, some of them are hearts some of them are stars uh, I think some of them are just circles and, and squares um, but if you wanted to do something larger um, they have another grade of, of glitter paint <laughs> they have ones that are unicorns actually I, 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 at this point, I can't really justify buying a glitter paint that would have unicorns in it. Um, but I can see the desire to do something with 
something that would have stars in it if you're doing like a space scene. Yeah. Um, so if I was... Much like the universe painting that you did. Like this one? Like right. the universe painting? Yeah. So I've got that, that, yeah. So I've got it up. So I can see the, the desire to want to maybe put glitter into this. And I'm not going to do it with this one because the punch that I've got in this painting I like a lot. Sure. Um... But I could see that it would be um, really effective in a way of making light and shadow pop um, as a watermark effect so that Can you're... Can you tell if you want to come down? Um, I'm in the middle of a conference. Okay. Is that, um, is that the great desire to do um, bingo? <laughs> the great desire to do bingo. Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, the glitterific that's the larger, and they're all in these two ounce bottles, um, has a larger, even larger uh, glitter in it. And the fact that they're kind of floated in this medium that's basically a binder that keeps the glitter from getting everywhere in the office is a huge, huge plus. Um, it's gonna be a nice part. It is. It is. It's really. It's nice to be able to to work with this and not get it everywhere. In fact, um, that's why I can't use this palette for really much of anything because it's already got glitter in many of the wells. And if I clean it out, there will be glitter everywhere. Okay. Um, but I think. What have I done with this glitter already? So I did ornaments with this glitter and then we did the the hat band the winter hat band with this glitter uh and then i also did uh the first frost painting with this glitter um so the fact that it's got a, a wider range of color shades and the fact that uh you can create that bulk effect if you figure out how to um get it to work the way you want it to and it's there's a learning curve there really is because with this white stuff while your brain kind of goes that's white i can paint it on a white background um for anybody that's watching this on a playback i really encourage you to go back through on my youtube channel and watch the first frost video because there is a learning curve with using white on a light background because the bits of glitter that reflect a light I mean, this becomes sciencey so science with me all because science and shit reflection versus refraction so one bends light and one just kicks light back at you okay so think a mirror versus glass or a prism because that's exactly what glitter does sure. in painting so if it's reflecting light it's just going to uh shoot light back at you but it would have to be at the exact same angle that you're um facing so the p pieces of glitter in this bottle that i'm moving back and forth the ones that are looking light at me versus looking light at you are actually at the point where their flat value is at my face and the rest of them are tipped in another direction to reflect light that way when you're talking about that the problem then becomes you can't get the glitter to all look to all lay flat on a surface that's one of the properties of glitter is that these little fine pieces of reflection and refraction are never all going to look and lay completely flat because if they did it would look like a mirror that's when you're talking metallics versus glitters and where it's not laying flat it will look dark because you actually have a solid piece of material in this clear translucent binder. And so while it's reflecting light in your direction at some point, it's also reflecting light in another direction. So in this case, like if light was coming down, like from here, it's lit right above the camera. 
it would my hand here looks lighter than my hand here because the light's coming from the top and you have a full surface area of my hand and I don't have a full lit surface of this. So this hand, while it's the same color, it's going to do the same thing with glitter. It's just that it's going to create a shadow on the one that's not absolutely 100% facing your face. So when you're okay. painting with even these translucent snows, the diamond colored glitter and the fine glitter, it has to not be the brightest paint and it can't not be completely white because it will look dirty because it will completely um it will take the white value the absolute whiteness and it will create a reflected light which is going to make your white your natural white of your surface and make it look dirty because it's not reflecting light which sounds it sounds really really super complicated but this is a mac background versus a light background and you see things with light so this is going to reflect a different color it's going to reflect an actual light source and look illuminated versus your background which is going to look dark but the fact that you can now get this folk art paint in so many different colors and so many different measurements of glitter adds for a really interesting bokeh effect uh, when you're talking like I could in this painting uh, and by the way all three of these uh, glitters are all different sizes uh, with the glitterific being the largest the extreme glitter being like a mid-range and then the dragonfly glaze being uh, I think what they call is a micro glaze uh, micro glitter because it's super super fine okay um, but the, the thing I'm thinking I want to play with on this one is that um, I'm going to go in and make this Fennec reasonably realistic, as it is a realistic drawing, and give it a very tawny background um, so that it blends in. I mean, one of the, the properties, one of the reasons these animals are as dull colored as they are so on here I'm thinking like you know your siennas and your uh, your uh, some of the umbers I'm probably still gonna stay away from like the uh, raw umbers uh, so I'm not getting the real dirty tones but not quite as extreme as the uh, a Disney painting or with first frost where like there was absolutely no umbers in it whatsoever in order to get that very warm feel uh, so we'll, we'll incorporate some umbers in this one as I already have um, this thing makes a really great pointer tool um, as I did it in the eyes so that the eyes look really realistic I want to paint this in kind of a realistic fashion along with the rock and then I think what I want to do is I want to kind of create some kind of atmospheric movement with some glitter, which is also going to act as a watermark uh, through the painting so that it looks like, um, you know, there's wind or something. There's some reason for this animal to be moving. Even though basically, <clears throat> not going to lie, first off, I shot this at Tim Timbavati a few years ago, and second off, uh, this is my spirit animal of annoyance when I have to get up and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's rather amusing to me. Uh, so that's that's the uh, the concept. Uh, let me see if I can't pull up its shot. So let's just change cameras here. Uh, so that's the reference picture right there. Uh, so he's a cute little bugger, but man, that like whole tone of annoyance, like I don't want to get up and go to work today. <laughs> Very cute. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a cute little guy. Um, but yeah, they're they're nocturnal. I didn't 
realize until just now there's poops in the front foreground. <laughs> We're gonna have a poop joke. Poop That's jokes. The second thing that hit my that hit my eye. Yeah, so we're going to take the poop joke out of this. But, yeah, he's a... Uh, so we're going to take out all the um, the reflections from the plexiglass because they actually weren't behind glass glass. So we got to work on taking all of the reflections out of this and on his tail and everything. And then we're just going to... We're definitely taking out the poop. <laughs> now, out of boredom, I researched... I researched a little about the Fennec yeah. Fox, and so I, I looked up the video, and then I got, or not the video, I looked up the pictures, uh -huh. and I got curious, well, what, what does a little bugger eat? I know what a red fox eats. So they primarily eat, um... They, they eat, like, mice and stuff. These things actually do eat mice, but... They, they eat bugs. Yeah, they eat bugs, and because there's so little to eat, and they're nocturnal, they're, they're very nocturnal, um, okay. they feed a lot on, um, on scorpions and spiders, and they eat a lot of the things I would never allow in my house. <laughs> yeah, they eat a lot of things I would never allow in my house, just... You in my house, die! <laughs> so, uh, let's see. I it looks look. like a life-size drawing of a bull. It, it possibly could be. It's probably not. It's probably not quite a realistic size, but, um... They're not much bigger than that. I mean, if you're talking in the range of foxes, I would think that, and I'm probably wrong, so if somebody's watching and they've got a fox and they're like, you're wrong, understand I don't have a fox. Um, I think these are one of the smallest breeds of fox. Um, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody somewhere in the comments is going to probably correct me on whether or not um, this is the smallest variety of fox, but... Um, I would say probably much like wolves, because they're in the canid family, that probably the largest variety of fox is probably your gray fox. Um, and then red fox is second. These are probably close to the bottom as far as um, whether or not they're a big variety or they're a small variety. Yes, I'm back to painting now. Now I'm like, I spent all this time talking and I didn't actually get any work done and I can only be streaming for like another half hour or so. Uh-oh. That's all right. Yeah, it's one o'clock here and I have to work at two because the restaurant is now open till mid... Well, it's open till 11 o'clock. Because... All right, have a good day. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna try. I always try to have good days about as much as I want to be talking about work but yeah that's pretty much that so Fenix decided to go to something a little bit more in my wheelhouse for a while while I kind of get over my hump about this thing with beard irises and the fact that I don't normally work in purples and reds and I don't normally do floras and I got no normally it's earth tones yeah, it's, it's usually very earth tony, so. And double that down by making it a yellow flower, a, a deep blue purple. And Rose was telling me at work the other night, she's like, you were just struggling so bad. I was, I felt really kind of bad for you watching that. Ooh. It happens. We all have those days. Yep. Um, if you want to, when we get off the air, I will, so there's a Restream app, I don't know if you can download while you're on the air, but you can, um, I'd rather not, but I'll take a note really quick. Yeah, there's, a, a the, the actual third-party app that all of the chats are now going through is called Restream. Um, 
Um, and yeah, me and Seth got to talking about it last night a lot because he actually learned about it in his business class. So apparently now in high school, instead of teaching you shop and how to work on a car, because they've made that obsolete, um, they uh, were talking in business class about this channel, which is why he brought it up at work and asked if I knew anything about it. Because he just streams right from his Xbox. Yeah. And so he doesn't have a computer to stream from. And my uh, one of my brother's kids is doing the same thing. Streaming from his Xbox. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty popular. In fact, I I'm, I'm starting to be reminded of why I didn't really want to get on Twitch because primary primarily Twitch right now is a lot of gaming. It, it's a lot of gaming. And the problem with that is, is if you're not gaming, you're going to wind up with a lot of emails from Twitch in your newsfeed that pertain to gaming. Okay. So my news, my business email has been flooded with, play this game now, it's trending on Twitch. And I'm like, I don't do that kind of streaming. Yeah, no, I, if I did, I'd probably do that with COD. Isn't COD a fish? Call of Duty. Oh, sorry. I killed them now. <laughs> I'm feeling really dumb now. It's okay. Isn't call of isn't cod a fish? Yes, it is a fish, actually. That's well, not that what he's good. referring to. Derp. <laughs> oh, too funny, too funny. So yes, we're kind of doing that. I just <laughs> I'm going to laugh about that for, like, a while now. That's that's just going to be the thing I'm going to laugh about. It's in cod a fish. <laughs> You're going to bring that up at work? Yeah, it's I am. Cod a fish. I'm, I'm, I'm going to absolutely look at Justin and be like, or, uh, I keep referring to him as Justin because physically he reminds me of the mage. Um, <laughs> and when he's thinking when I say Justin, he's thinking the porter Justin. Which is, like, it's a legitimate, like, miscommunication. It just... Okay. My name isn't Justin. He'll get annoyed me, with me. My name's not Justin. I, I, I know. It, it's a Freudian slip. You have to understand, I will live with the kid for, like, a year. He tried to set fire to everything. Yes. He literally had to evict him over the fact that he was trying to unhealthily set things on fire. Please don't develop an obsession with thermite. Please don't. Just... Kids, don't play with thermite. It's really not going to do all the fancy things you think it's going to do. <laughs> somebody, somebody on the stream is like, what the hell is thermite? Yeah, he was one of the people that like thought that 9-11 was the inside job and they used thermite to do it. I'm like, how can you be so obsessed with one freaking thing? I'm like, it's, it's, it's one element of an entire world of things and you he just would not let it go <laughs> not right, for right. All, all the tea in china just thermite 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 stop it you're like peanut just stop it uh. <laughs> thermite 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 <laughs> it's good it's good it's good it's good it's good yeah <laughs> So I was streaming before I went to work yesterday and Luscious was on the air because he was supposed to be sleeping and a notification on Discord woke him up. So, oh, Luscious. Yeah. Yes, Luscious. I really need to send you a picture of him because when you see Devin, 
You're just gonna be like the, you know, the word that um, I think of when I see him. When it came out last year for uh, during New Year's, and we were supposed to go to Star Wars. Yeah. I met him, but oh. that was a brief. Meeting. Oh yeah. Okay, so you do have an image in your head when you think of Devin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Luscious. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't. <laughs> Luscious. Oops. Yeah, I was having a debate yesterday. Um, because for all intents and purposes, what I could do with these ink tense pencils is to the reason they're pencils is because you should be able to just take and draw down here with um the pencil and then just add Ooh. water and dilute as you would normally with uh watercolor but then once it dries it sets for life and um i primarily don't do that because when i'm using these ink tents i have a tendency of using very fine lines and like right now I'm just all oh, for God's sakes guess what I forgot to do what? I forgot that if I'm gonna do this I need to make sure I'm recording because I don't have the camera turned on come on Duke, 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 duke. Come on, charge. See, that's going to be the next thing that's going to go on the chopping block for streaming. Is, is what, the Sony? Yeah, the Sony's got to go. Because, A, I'm still stuck. Because I'm still stuck right now with two big problems, and one of them is the fact that this thing is really finicky about power sources. So, um, on the original setup for the Sony, which is the camcorder that is next to the video camera that I'm streaming with, so there's actually two cameras here. I don't know if I can get this to look up. So you can see the webcam here, but then what's still off camera because it's so far up is um, the Sony Handycam, which is what I normally film my tutorials with. It was a cheap $100 camera. Sure. Okay. In order to get it to work on a regular basis, I have to um, have it plugged in on a power source all the time. Um, and originally, what I had it is I had it plugged into a power strip that's right underneath this drafting table. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, with the new tower, things took a turn. So, I, I swear to God, along with having to be a carpenter and a cabinet maker, I had to turn into an electrician because um, I had to figure out the wiring for the new setup, and part of that was uh, the camera rigs and powers for the camera rigs. Um, so the, the power system for the camera that records used to be overhead and plug in to a power strip that's right behind the strapping table, which is where the pencil sharpener and this monitor is plugged in. And yeah. for some reason, uh, when I rewired everything, it suddenly doesn't like that power source and it won't acknowledge that power strip. Um, I also had to get a separate extension. That's why last night we were kind of laughing at work about how my wiring has wiring. Because uh, many of the USB cables that I have for things uh like case in point this camera right here um are not long enough to now go to the new location of the tower which is 
in the bottom cabinet so that it's not up on the desk making a ton of racket in my ear and being dis distracting in my ear. Um, so uh, the amount of things that I've had to learn in the last several months about everything, like I showed, I showed Seth my streaming setup and he had several expurlatives about that because he was like, that is way more complicated than I thought it was going to be. And I was like, yes, it is. You know, I used to kind of think it was kind of ridiculous that like when uh, Aaron Blaze would start going and start a stream, it you seemed to take... This is bad. You, you should have seen the, the, the computer that started getting dumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when... Um, That's uh, why we call this one Deep Thought. Deep thought. <laughs> deep thought. Now with Jack Handy, deep thought. Um, but when the, um, with the old setup, when I wasn't streaming with the old computer, I could run the power strip right out of the power for the recording camera right off of that power strip. And as sad as it is, I think one of the reasons why I'm dreading moving and buying a condo is because it's going to take me a full month and I won't be able to be on the air at all for like a month because it's going to take me that long to set everything up again because it took okay. me what three weeks to perfect how to wire this studio now and I'm just like I don't want to do that again nope I don't want to do that I'm going to take a heavy lane into the nope department for I don't want to do that it just it it's so much um so there's a reasonable amount of outlets in this room but understand all of them are being used so there sure. is an outlet on this wall over here uh, behind monitor one and uh that now has a power strip into the cabinet so I can plug in the modem, the router, the tower. Um, I think the power, well, because the Wacom one has a power source that it needs as well. And there's some other things that are plugged in there. So there's a power strip in there for powering the main computer stuff when I'm just on the internet. <laughs> then there's a second power source here for like the overhead lamp uh the pencil sharpener the monitor and i believe that would that was where i originally had this camera plugged into and for some reason now uh since i've rewired like i actually took power sources out of that particular power strip and it still doesn't like me <laughs> um and it still won't i i can have it plugged in and it'll just be like I'm going to nope right out of here. I don't want to deal with you today. Um, and so I won't, I can't plug the Sony into that power strip. It, it, it won't power. I don't know if it's the power strip or what. I'm thinking it's not the USB extension cable um, because I did have a USB extension cord that I bought because the six foot was really tight and I want the cables to be a little bit looser in case I have to move things. Um, yeah. A little bit more versatility would probably be a good thing. And I'm thinking that when I redo the studio when I move, um, this rig right here, which is <clears throat> PVC piping and um, such, will probably change so that I am able to actually do this rig correctly. Um, and that will okay. probably be the last thing that will be a major change when I move, is that the rig over the table will no longer, it will be more stable. Because right now, uh, the only place that the rig is actually mounted is to the wall. Uh, so when I move it, or when I touch it, uh, it likes to freak out and it will bounce a lot for a really long time because it's just, it's PVC on a wall anchor for a pipe. Um, 
but it's mounted into the wall, so it's got three, like two and a half feet of three quarter inch PVC that is um, kind of just hanging straight out. <clears throat> There's nothing in the ceiling stabilizing it. Because I really would like to prefer to not have 4,000 holes in this wall because I'm renting. Sure. Um, but right now it's it's got even more tension on it because now instead of just having the Sony up there, I also have the webcam up there. And <clears throat> so just the slightest little movement gets it to bounce for a really long series of time, which I'm not real fond of for streaming because that means that at the beginning of the stream, I gotta make sure that the memory card is empty, that I've already got the camera set up and that I don't have to touch it for any reason for hours on end, <clears throat> which isn't feasible with the Sony because it's recording to a memory card instead of recording to a drive. Yeah. And so... You have it connected by USB though, how is it? Why isn't it going to the, to the drive? Um, because it is not, the camera itself is not to, designed to record via USB. Okay. It, it's designed... I'm just wondering if that's going to be a problem for me in the future, and it looks like it will be. Um, yeah, it's... I've got a Sony too, and yeah. I want to set up that, my, my channel. Yeah, so the, um, the camera can record to a memory card, but this particular camera cannot record to a drive, which was something okay. I spent weeks trying to troubleshoot, is... Can I please get this thing to just do what I want it to do? And the resounding answer was no. Uh, it's got to have its own power source and it has to record to a memory card, which I'm not, I really don't like that. And there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Okay. Um... So the, the next thing that's going to wind up being replaced in the studio is I'm going to wind up getting that Canon, Canon uh, I think it was an M something, it was an M series Canon, and then that will have the capacity to record to, um, it'll, it'll be able to record the HD and record it in, um, on a drive rather than recording on a memory card because after about two and a half three hours of recording I the memory card, the memory card gets, gets filled yep and so I have to stop and then I have to transfer it onto the computer and then I have to interrupt everything I'm doing and sometimes it becomes very hard to get back to what I was doing when stuff like that happens sure you're distracted and then you're like well i can't i don't want to keep moving because well excuse me a second i'll be right back you're fine Kind of wondering if maybe this isn't actually picking up a chat. Are you doing what I think you're supposed to be doing? I don't know. 
Stabby Nat returns. How was your trip? You didn't fall for anything good, well, did you? Pardon? You didn't fall for anything good, did you? No. Uh, you know, there's some part of me that's just like, I want, um, I want to, I think I should eat something before I go to work, but I'm like, no, I'm not hungry. I've really lost my appetite the last couple of days. I don't know if it's stress good. or what. Yeah, I'm like, nothing is appealing and nothing is, nothing looks good, nothing smells good. <laughs> Got you sound like you, you've been eating nursing food, nursing home food then. I just, it's... <laughs> I don't know, like I said, I don't know if I got the blahs or whatever, like I, um. It I'm, sounds like the blahs to me. I go through the blahs in mouth myself, so. Yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm trying to like, I don't know if I'm like in a rut or whatever, but man, just, I cannot shake this funk. It just, ugh. Got a little dark on this one. Oh, the, um, like even the pancakes when I went out the other day and I had pancakes with Rose and I was like, I was so looking forward to it. And then I got like real, like, cause at Cracker Barrel they use the real. The pancakes would have been good. Yeah, I was really expecting the pancakes to just be like, there it is, there's that, that, that comfort food, happy food thing that I've been looking for, and it just was kind of like, like, I was happy with it for about 30 seconds, and then I was just like, eh, it's food, I'm just feeding my face, and I'm like, wow, I must be really super upset about something, because not even pancakes, <laughs> like, not even pancakes. It's pancakes. What the hell, girl? I, I don't know. I just, like, the maple syrup was all yummy and maple syrupy, but, like, man, um, I, I was in a funk, just serious funk. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what my deal is lately. I just, Rose said that the night that I was streaming and, um, I was working on the bearded irises, she said it looked like I was in near tears a couple of times, and I was like, I don't know. I'm like, kind of like very looking forward to when Scott gets back from his LOA. And since I won't be streaming on Monday because of surgery on Wednesday, um, I'm kind of hoping that the hiatus from work will help because it's super like hard to stay motivated like and everybody at work is burned out it's it's not just me everybody at work is burned out um but like this is this burnout is kind of getting into everything else too because it's it's very hard to stay motivated i think my alarm clock's going off yep my alarm clock's going off Oh, crap. Well, I got that would be it. Yes, and that is why my alarm clock's going off, because it's 1.30 and I have to get ready for work. So, yep, that's going to be a thing. So you are the only one on my stream tonight. But it was kind of an impulsive thing. It was very much impulsive. So, but I need to get off the air, and I don't know if I'm going to get back on the air tonight when I get home or not. 
Oh, I can probably shut this camera off. Think. Just quietly work on this by myself. I thought it was kind of dumb oh, that. Right. You've got a very nice start happening. Yeah, I'm. I'm really happy with it. I like the way it looks. Um, and animals are more my wheelhouse than flowers are anyway. This is my wheelhouse as far as color palettes. My wheelhouse as far as anatomy. Uh, so I'm. I, it's more my comfort zone. So I'm kind of hoping if I work with something that I am more naturally affluent to. Uh, I still have to start Dave's, um, his dog painting of um, Lucy and Hydra. Yeah, I still have to work on that yet. Um, okay. So there's, there's that. I'm trying to fix this so that I, in the camera, like there's the discussion box that's over here and then I'm not in the and I'm not hiding behind chat boxes that are actually not active, so. Because um, hopefully this will take off. I don't know. Um, I just kind of feel a little bad. I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little nervous that it's going to look really badly when Monday I'm working and I'm not going to be on the stream like I planned on it because I'm trying to set my schedule up on Twitch and I forgot that I shouldn't have done that because... Monday I'm not going to be on because Wednesday I have surgery, so. Okay. So, yeah, so. But then hopefully I will be able to get some work done on this and then get some content up. Oh, I can't upload it to Twitch. So apparently you have to hit some certain status in Twitch before you can upload videos to grow your okay. channel, which I think is a little... To me, that's a little backwards. It's like a lot backwards. Because um, there's all the content on the YouTube channel that are like speed tutorials and actual tutorials and streaming sessions that we've done, um, working on pieces and building up stuff. And I I have affiliate links over in social media, tw tw uh, links over to my YouTube channel, but I can't post any of that content on Twitch. And when I'm not streaming... That's weird. Yeah, when I'm not streaming, none of this is saved because um, I was digging into it last night and I was kind of hoping to upload a channel trailer or do any of, like, minor things. Not, like, a ton of things. I mean, we're sitting at how many videos on YouTube? Yeah. And, um, but just something. Spoke, post the three-minute lion speed demo that, that I did or something small. I was actually thinking of posting the um, first Frost video. Because a, it's funny, and and b, it um, it it kind of goes with the theme of what I've been doing lately with, you know, glitter and uh, watermarking my artwork. But I can't upload anything. So when I'm not on Twitch, my channel doesn't exist because there's no content on it at all. Like I can't have anything that plays in the background when I'm not streaming. Which is why I might just start oh. randomly streaming on Twitch whenever I'm just. Whenever I'm just there and um, working on some artwork. Because if I'm at work, there's no content for anybody to want to subscribe to. Which is a little disturbing. Apparently you have to hit so many followers and you have to hit so many hours of streaming content before they allow you to upload videos. I don't know. I don't have an upload box. So it just says, well, this is your content and this is your... Your, you can do like your best of shots and you can do a collaboration and all this other stuff that you can upload but I I have an upload and it pulls up a list of nothing if I put streams up there and you know to look back at my streams like I can do that on Facebook and I can do that on YouTube um, I can pull back the streams I can't do that on Twitch which is super infuriating because the whole point of the platform is is to have a video log for streaming and they I can't do any of that so I'm kind of stuck on Twitch right now that doesn't make sense no it doesn't and I think I'm starting to think that honestly it um, it is pointless to stream on Facebook because honestly between the fact that my snowball mic picked up the audio from the music I was playing the other night 
and um, uh, the fact that it limited it down to 40 minutes and yesterday's was like 56 so maybe it was because of the content and was picking up the music from my headphones um, I, I haven't picked up a single viewer from Facebook nobody comments on it nobody's watching it because the the nice thing about this restream thing is that right now streaming three platforms I can say and I don't know how many of them are bots and how many of them are you but I have one viewer on YouTube and I have one viewer on Twitch so I don't know if any of them are bots I don't know um, okay. I, I it's hard to get an actual take um, on what my viewership is or if, if basically it's counting the Twitch viewer as a bot, and maybe it is a bot, and that it's counting you as the viewer on YouTube if it's actually updating. I'm not sure I'd have to look at my um, channel analytics on YouTube tonight. So, oh crap, I gotta go to work. I'm gonna let you go. All right, take it easy, Ellen. Talk to you later. Bye. Have a good day.